President Biden wrapping up his trip out west with a final stop in Utah today. This after dodging questions from our own Peter Ducey about his <laughs> alleged ties to Hunter business dealings. That's right. And Jump Peter, on over, Peter. Look at that. And Peter Ducey. I'm coming to you, President. Peter Ducey joins us right now with details. Uh, Peter, I believe you are in New Mexico. The president left New Mexico and has continued his uh, West Coast trip. Tell us a little bit about that uh, opportunity to pose the first question about Devin Archer's testimony last week. All right, so let's talk about the opportunity to do it then. Let's go back to that video. Uh, and this is a disclaimer for anybody watching at home. Do not try this at home. Do not jump over a barricade towards a president or towards anybody with a Secret Service detail. But basically what happened is at the very end of this event in New Mexico, uh, the president noticed that I was there near where he was going to exit, and I was the last man standing in the press area. He started to wave me over. I thought that that meant that I could just go. There was a staffer standing there, and you can see in the beginning of that clip who was saying, the president does not have time for this right now. But I was looking over this staffer who was just following instructions. I was looking over his shoulder, and I could see the president going like this, and the Secret Service lead next to him saying, come to us. So that is when I bounced over the bike rack. Uh, and it was really important to try to get to him because he has not addressed anything concerning this testimony, these stories, allegations about his son's business, what Republicans are saying, trying to link the president to the Hunter Biden business deals. And so uh, we want to give him a chance to set the record straight. And that is what we did. Here's that clip. There's this testimony now where one of your son's former business associates is claiming that you were on speakerphone a lot with them talking business. Is that what? I've never talked business in anybody. And I, I know you'd have a lousy question. Well, what do you, it's, why is that a lousy question? Because it's not true. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. And as soon as I got back to the rental car in the parking lot at that wind tower plant that used to be a solo cup plant, which is the fun fact of yesterday, uh, I heard from a White House official who was disputing the very premise of that question that we were asking about uh, talking business on speakerphone because in Devin Archer's testimony, he doesn't say that they talked business specifically. But Devin Archer later did come out to say it is categorically false that President Biden, then Vice President Biden, did not know what was going on with Hunter uh, while all of this was happening. And so that is why we asked the question that we did. And we appreciate President Biden waving us over. Again, the only time that it's ever OK to jump a barricade at a presidential event is if you are waved over. Otherwise, don't try it. Back to you. Uh, but, but Peter, you seem a little bit surprised as I was. They just said lousy question. I mean, He's rating your question now. Do you think it was a lousy question? No, and in terms of uh, his rating of my questions to him, that was, uh, that was just middle of the road. <laughs> I, I understand that he, they don't want to talk about this. Right. Uh, he has spent most of August trying to promote a green economy. He's been on vacation. Uh, they have been taking a strategy where they want the attention to be on the Republican front runner. They want the attention to be on... Uh, Trump in court, and they don't want to be talking about uh, possible legal problems for their side. Right. And so I understand why he would not like the question. But again, uh, if they could just set the record straight and explain exactly what happened right. a couple years ago away from the cameras, then this story probably, uh, it, it, depending on what the explanation is, uh, this story and the intrigue around it becomes less and less because we would have answers. That's right. what we were trying to do. So, uh, lousy question. I don't think so, uh, in, but he's the president. What's so. interesting, too, is you're right. Your leg went over the top of that bike rack yeah. and the staffers were saying, no, no, no. And then once the president says come over and Secret Service has come over, you can. So you you jumped over the bike rack and you went to, to talk to him. But he seems to criticize your questions. You're one of the few that's asking him these tough questions. But yet he invited you over. Yes, and he has told me privately and publicly that he knows 
the questions are going to be hard, but that I've got to keep asking them. That's from him. Okay. And so, to his credit, when he waved me over, he knew that I wasn't going to ask him, I, hey, how great was that Bidenomics <laughs> speech just now? Uh, he knew it was going to be something tough, and he took it anyway. So he does deserve a lot of credit for that. Yeah, right. and, and Peter, you know, uh, I, I think the headline is uh, the president had the opportunity to deny that he ever talked on a speakerphone, and he didn't. Uh, instead, he said, you know, I, I, I didn't, didn't talk, talk about, about business, business, which is what he told you at the Iowa State for, Fair, what, four years ago? Yes, and that is that is brand new because uh, we had not heard anything really on the record from the White House about these calls. He is saying, and his staff is saying, they did not talk business. He's not saying they did not talk at all. <laughs> and so that is new. Um, and uh, again, it just, if we can catch up to him uh, soon, right. uh, maybe there can be a further explanation about what they talked about. Uh, it was that was as much as we could get. Right. That jump over and, the bike. And, and right? I don't know if you get the New York Post, if the New York Post is delivered to your door before you go to work in the morning, but the cover of the Post of last week was a personal card, handwritten. P.S. I'm glad to Devin Archer. You and my son are working together. So they are talking about the work they're doing together, but he's, he's not talking. He's admitting to everything except for specifically involved, but every single major deal involves some type of meeting, speakerphone or person to person with the president. And Peter, what's most striking is, where's the money? We hear that Hunter Biden has no money, but we see millions of dollars, cars handed off, a million, from, uh, a, million a year from Burisma, let alone the tax problems, but where's the money now? Is the, isn't anyone trying to find out where this money is? That is what the House Republicans say that they are trying to figure out. They haven't been able to produce any uh, direct linkage exactly. yet. I think that is something that mm -hmm. White House officials are getting more and more frustrated about, that there is all there are all these big accusations about bribery and corruption, but there is no direct right. link. Right. And uh, something Devin Archer said in his testimony, and we've looked at the transcript, he said that they never had uh, the then vice president talking business specifics. They weren't sitting around looking at like proposals or spreadsheets. Uh, that part seems to be understood by everybody that is looking at this, that right. nobody was asking President Biden to go over their reports before the end of the quarter. Uh, but what exactly they were talking about and who uh, say that they were not talking business, because that's what the president told us. Talked so about we the have weather. To go with that. Only the weather. Uh, right. Talks exactly. about the weather. Say, say that, uh, you know, we will take the president at his right. word there. But then who did he think these people were right. on the phone? Sure. So, so Peter, you're, you return from work after a number of weeks on paternity leave. Three days in, you think Joe just thought, hey, Peter Ducey, come on over <laughs> here. Tell me about the baby. <laughs> uh, you know, if you look at the bike rack it kind of looks like a crib a the side of a crib thing. and so it's just the same idea yeah. just trying to get in there that's what i just told me. your dad that i said don't show your daughter that video she's going to get an idea because that's what starts with the first leg and then the parents see there and the parents uh, say no 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 it's no, an no. easy step if and you're six seven again. right and and Ainsley said peter looks like he's climbing, climbing out, out of a crib. crib right I, uh, Peter, which which it, I saw it, it, about 35 idea. years ago. And my uh, doctor said, the pediatrician said, the moment Hayden tries to do that, you have to put her in a big girl bed because she could actually fall out. So don't uh, show Bridget that yet. Uh, we will not let her see that yet. <laughs> she doesn't right. need to hear that her dad had a lousy question until <laughs> she's a little right. bit. Oh, it's going to live right. on in the right. internet. It's, it, somebody's it, it, put it on your Wikipedia. Yeah. Peter, it, Peter stuck around in New Mexico just to be on Fox and Friends this morning. Peter, thank it. you very much. Go home now. All right. All right, see ya. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.